Where, where do you think Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Hopkins, where do you think they end up? Yeah, man, those are two interesting guys. I mean, guys you plug in and they can be, I mean, they're your ones. They can easily be your ones. I know people are trying to say D-Hop slow down, and that's uh, it's, it's amazing how fast they can forget when you get hurt. But I think D-Hop needs to go to uh, – I would love him to, to, to end up with a, another big time, you know, quarterback. I think Mac Jones needs him most mm-hmm. uh, to be the, the the team that the Patriots need. But I would love a, a team like the Ravens to go snatch him up. Like show Lamar Jackson, like no, we're 100 percent invested in finally giving you all the weapons you need. Uh, I think that would be one of those Madden teams setting up your roster if he goes there. OBJ but, and D-Hop. I mean, that's pretty oh, sick. Oh, my God, bro. It, it would be amazing. Like, tell me that's not football you want to watch when you got you got Lamar Jackson passing the ball. Oh, beautiful. And then if I'm going Dalvin Cook, I would really love him to go down and stay in Miami. Mm. Like, I, I, w- I would really love him to be on Miami scheme. I love, I, you know, I like what Mike Daniels does with his offensive weapons. They're fast. They can move around. Uh, they, they're weapons, true weapons. And when you have speed on that football field, it is a new game in these last, you know, three, four years when it comes to, hey, we know how to use our speed and we'll beat you with it regardless of you want to play power ball or not. We're, we're just going to run around you and run past you. So I would love to put them in that run game and allow him just to rip it up for those boys. Those are some super teams you're putting together. I, I, I like where your head's at, Trey, there. Uh, former Carolina Panther, what, what's your, uh, your outlook on their season? They got, a, they got a nice rookie quarterback coming in. Yeah, I've been hearing good things about Bryce Young. I've been talking to a few of the guys, man. They, they, they love his composure. They love that, you know, off the field, they don't have to worry about him not being uh, with his head in it. You know, they, they, they know that he's focused when he's off the field. They know that he's putting in his grind that it takes to be a professional. And to be QB1, it takes a different grind. I mean, I watched Cam Newton – from, you know, uh, the earliest in the office to leaving 7, 8 a.m. when guys are leaving at 5, 6. I mean, leaving at 9 when guys are leaving at 5, 6. I mean, you have to put in that work. So to see guys around him like Josh McCown, who's his coach, I think it's, it's pivotal because you need those veterans uh, like him and Andy Dalton to – Feed him the knowledge that he needs because it's a game of reps. As long as you can get your reps, you're going to get better. But to have veterans like those two guys around him at an early age when he already is focused and has that great mental, has come from Bama, so you know Nick Saban's coached him up well with mm-hmm. the offensive coordinators he's had. I mean, I think Bryce Young, the, 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 I would say the ceiling is the roof. The ceiling is the roof. All right, uh, I, I like that. I, I, I say the, the ceiling is the, there is no ceiling. It's the, it's the sky. I'm I'm high on Bryce Young, and it's it's exciting, right? When you have like a rookie quarterback coming in to a franchise, to me, you know, the fan it, it may not work out. You know, history says that usually it doesn't, but it, it's very exciting. Uh, you've you've yeah. you know you were in the league for seven years, covered a lot of of different receivers. Who's who's the toughest matchup you ever had? Oh, I mean, toughest matchup I've ever had, man. Julio Jones in his prime was was an animal. I mean, I, an animal. I got to witness him go off for 300 passing yards. Listen, I did not start that game. That was <laughs> coach's decision. Listen, that hey, that wasn't me. I'm None of those yards. Know. Uh, I, I listen. That wasn't me. Uh, I, I, you know, I was probably in for about sixty, seven, but three hundred. No, no. <laughs> but no, man. Julio Jones at the at the peak of his prime, man. The way he could stop on a dime, being what six four, two twenty. I mean, he was a beast. He was an animal. So to play against guys like that. I mean, it, it truly, he was a game changer anytime he was on the field. Yeah, no, he, Julio, I couldn't imagine go, going up against it. You're a big dude, though. So, I, you know, I, 60, 70, it would have not have been 300 if you had started that game. So we need yeah, to. No, uh, no, nah, nah, we both know that, yeah. bro. No way. <laughs> you, you would have held him definitely under 100 for sure. Maybe one touch. I, but. I, will, I, I ain't going to say that, but 300, <laughs> no. <laughs> Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.